In this video, I will give a demo of the final API which we are going to create in this course. I'm inside the Postman REST client. We're going to use this tool to test the APIs. Inside this Postman, we have created a collection expense manager API. If you expand this, you will see all the requests, all the REST endpoints which we're going to create in this course. And inside this, we have created the environment. Inside the Postman, we have created uh, different environments to test the APIs. For example, dev environment, prod environment. And if you click on this, you will see the different environments. For the expense manager API, we have a two different environments that prod environment and the dev environment. The dev, which is nothing but the local host, the local system. The prod, which is nothing but the the final version we have deployed it to the production server. So let's choose to the prod environment. And inside this, now we are going to test all the APIs or the rest endpoints. First, let's start with register. And if you click on this URL, you will see the production URL has been set to this URL variable. Okay, so now if the user provides the user has to provide the details to create a new account. So if the user give an invalid email address and if the user try to create a new record, it will throw the validation error, which is enter a valid email. And it will display the status code 400 bad request. Let's enter the valid email address and click send. A new record has been created. A user account has been created. Now let's go ahead and log in. Click on this login. And now bushan at gmail.com. Now while creating the new account, we have given the password 123456. But if I provide a invalid credential 12345, click send we get the bad credential exception. Super. Let's provide the correct credential, one, two, three, four, five, six. Click send. Now we get the JWT token. Now the fun part begins. So now for all other requests, we need to pass this JWT token inside the header. But we are not going to do this manually. We're going to set up some automation. We have already set up some automation inside this postman. So the postman will take this JWT token. It will add it to all the requests inside the header. Let's go to the read expenses. Of course, the user has not created any expenses as of now, but the moment we click on this send, we get the empty response. But if you look at this inside this header, we have not set the authorization and the token, the JWT token. The moment we click on this send without even adding it, the API still works. You can see, and we get the empty response because the user has not yet created any expenses. But if you go inside the hidden part, you will see the authorization and the bearer token. So we have not added this token, but the postman will add it for us. And now, since we are getting the empty response, let's go ahead and create a new expense. Go to the create expense and we're going to create an expense let's say expense one and if the user did not provide the amount and the moment click on this send it will throw the validation error which is expense amount should not be null now let's enter the name amount category description and date and click send we get the response back. Let's create a few more records so that I will show you the pagination and sorting as well. Okay, so now we have around six expenses and let's go to the read expenses now. We have this read expenses, click send. We get few expenses like expense one, expense two, expense three, expense four, five and six. And now if you look at the expense ID 12, 
which is having the amount 100 we can update this to 200 let's go to the update expense and the one which we are going to update is first let's close this we have so many requests let me let's not get too confused let's go to the read expenses the expense id 12 that we need to update the amount let's go to the update update expense change it to 12 and description not the description amount let's change it to 200 the moment we click on this send the amount has been updated and we get the response back similarly if the expense is not present let's say 55 which is not even present if the user try to update the record it will throw the exception expense is not found for the id 55 okay now let's go to the read expenses right now inside this read expenses we are getting all the expenses the six expenses we can apply the sorting so we will provide the parameters at the top which is sort we can sort based on the field for example i want to sort it based on the amount amount and click send it has been sorted in the ascending order if i want to sort it based on the descending order you just need to add comma t e s c and click send the record has been sorted in the descending order you can see the amount has been sorted in the descending order 600 500 400 and 300 similarly you can also sort it based on the name but we have already we are adding the same names so it doesn't make sense to sort the records using the name but we can apply the pagination for example i want to display only the first two records inside the first first page so what we can do is we can provide the request parameters which is page is equal to zero and we will provide the one more property one more parameter which is size we are going to set the size size is equal to 2 and we need to add the and ampersand to separate these properties the moment we click on this send we get only two records in the first page which is expense 6 and expense 5 because we are sorting it in the descending order so let's sort remove this it will sort in the ascending order you can see expense 1 expense 2 if you go to the next page just change the page number to 1 click send we will get expense 3 expense 4 so the page number always starts from 0th index it's a 0 based index 0th index it will start and the size you can limit it to anything so let change it to 3 click send we get 3 records okay so now we have looked at the pagination and sorting we also covered the validation and we also looked at the exception handling and the last part is delete the expense so let's we can delete the expense let's delete the 14 delete expense let's change it to 14 click send 204 no content which has been deleted let's go to the read expenses and click send you can see okay let me get rid of this pagination and sorting click send expense 4 which is not even present inside the database next we can also test these uh, read user update user and filter by category filter by keyword and filter by date but i'm not going to test it in this video because that will take a lot of time the video becomes lengthy so we're going to test these apis as and when we develop the rest endpoints but the last one thing we need to test is when the user right now uh, the user logged in as a bushan and he created all these expenses the expense one two three four five six now let's create a new user let's go to the register change it to bharat bharat at gmail.com one two three four five six the moment click on this send a new account has been created go to the login change it to bharat click send 
So now Bharat has been logged in, which is a new user. And when we click on this read expenses, the moment we click on this send, we get empty response, which is expected because a new user has been created just now and he haven't created any expenses as of now and we are getting the empty response even though inside the database we have expenses but which is not created by the current user those expenses are created by other user so this is what we're going to build in this course so if the user created a expense only the user can see those expenses the other users cannot see those expenses or the other users can't see the expenses which are created by other users Okay, so now let's go to the create expense and let's quickly do the electricity bill and click send. We get the electricity bill back. And if you go to the read expenses, you can see we get a single expense which is created by the current user. Okay, the last thing what we need to do is we need to, when the user has been deleted, we also need to delete all these expenses. So let's go to the delete user and the moment we click on this, okay, now the user has been logged in as a Bharat, go to the delete user, click send 204, the user has been deleted. Now let's go back to the login. If the user tries to log in again, we will get the brand credential because the user account has been deactivated. Super. So this is the application we are going to develop in this course. Of course, I couldn't test all these APIs because that will take a lot of time, but we're going to develop these APIs inside the course. I will see you in the next video.